Welcome. Uh, it's a small enough audience that I probably don't need the microphone, but I'll make use of the microphone just in case. Thank you for coming out on a rainy Friday. Uh, I, we, you know, I'm sure we're all very thankful for the rain, but at the same time, it's uh, sometimes nice to stay uh, home uh, where you're warm and cozy. But uh, we do appreciate the fact that you've come out this evening. I think we're going to learn a lot, and I think it'll be a very interesting presentation. To introduce our two speakers tonight, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm Brett Lee. I have the fortune or misfortune of uh, being uh, the current mayor of Davis. Um, I want to introduce uh, Dick Bourne. He's going to be doing the introductions of our uh, two uh, speakers this evening. Thank you, Brett, for that kind introduction. I don't know if I need the mic either, but I really wanted to hold on and see if it's a hot mic. <laughs> I better behave because it, we're being videoed. Is that what you're telling me, Al? <laughs> this is going to be very difficult. <laughs> uh, first of all, thanks to, thanks to all of you for coming out. It's, I mean, I think I know almost everyone here, so it's so wonderful to have the opportunity to, to um, share these two wonderful Frenchmen with many people I already know. And um, I want to, we're going to basically take kind of a look back at the beginning of this event tonight, and then a lot of it's going to be a look forward, mostly by, by the French. But um, the look back has to do with the fact that 35 years ago, let me introduce these two guys right now, Danielle Faure, who was uh, a principal at a small uh, mechanical engineering consulting firm in the southeast corner of France, came to Davis with a French group that was sponsored by the equivalent of our California Energy Commission over there. And Village Homes was even better known then perhaps than now, so they were touring Village Homes. And at that time, <clears throat> Davis Energy Group in its infancy was three years old and our office was in Village Homes. So this crazy French guy wanders with this group through our office and I had learned a little bit of French, and so I probably foolishly tried a little of that on Danielle, and pretty soon I had invited him over to our house for dinner, and we, Carol, I like to introduce my wife, Carol, who's been involved with this for a, a while. Um, she cooked up a real dinner. I don't remember whether it was French, but Danielle and I cooked up an engineer exchange. And so for four years, from 1984 until uh, 1988, we had families going back and forth from this uh, wonderful community in Ambrun up in the French Alps to Davis. And so that was wonderful for our families. And I, I mean, I, th I think it changed all the lives of the, the Bourne family members. For Carol and me, it was the first trip to Europe. And, um, our, our kids were, I, I think, have loved France ever since. Um, and it had, I think, uh, lots of beneficial effects on the, on the visiting French folks, too, who stayed with us in Davis. And uh, Judy uh, Corbett, when I somehow we got engaged on this possibility of a Futures Forum event with these two, the, her first memory was that that one of these guys was invited down to the Springer cabin near Santa Cruz and the Frenchman beat everyone at Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been playing a little Scrabble the last, the last week or so. <clears throat> anyway, um, it, it, their perspective, of course, has been European, not American, but they've stayed in touch over the years. And actually, two years ago, um, Danielle invited, and oh, I should introduce Eve Barame because, Eve, raise your hand, Eve was the Scrabble guy, and he was the one who went down to the Santa Cruz cabin and showed those skills. Um, so two years ago, um, Danielle, who has been a major organizer for energy efficiency activities in the south of France, invited me to be a speaker at a conference in, in Marseille, and so I went and and uh, did that, and he kindly provided a translator. My French had atrophied a lot, probably wasn't good enough to begin with. 
I'm not doing that tonight. So I'm, I'll help where I can, but their English is pretty good, much better than my French. So we, we hope that'll go well. But I wanted to um, give them the opportunity to tell an American audience some of what they've been doing, as I was given the opportunity to talk about my forays into cooling energy efficiency in a dry climate. And their climates are quite similar. So uh, this is the third of three events we've had today. The first was a presentation that Eve made this morning at the Sunrise Rotary, and he was basically focusing on a better building and community rating system that they've developed, that they personally were involved in developing and is spreading through France now that's sort of like LEED, only much better. We went through the LEED process, you know, for our building in downtown here, and it was long and painful and not very, there was very little public participation. So if there's time at the end, uh, Eve may talk a little bit about that, but mostly Danielle is going to go through, uh, uh, he's gonna reminisce a little too, I suspect, but I think mostly he's going to um, go through a series of actions and activities that are going on in Europe that we can compare with actions that we're taking to com combat climate change. So without further ado, I am going to hand the hot mic over to Danielle Foré, and we'll see what kind of foré he makes. Thank you very much, Dick. It's quite a family for me here. <laughs> um, oh. I'm going to, um, to present for you the French uh, context about environment. Ah, yeah, I think it will be okay now, okay. And uh, about uh, energy and uh, environmental policies. Uh, we have strengths and we have weaknesses. And um, the strong is we have only 4.6 tons per capita uh, of uh, CO2, but we are not that great. Uh, we have a good climate, a short distance, average population density, but the impact of made in China is about three or five tons per capita. So uh, we have to think uh, about the made in China. We have a good railway network, but for how long? I don't know. We have strong energy regulations and we have no coal, but too many nuclear plants. And if you can see this slide, you, you can see that France is making electricity with 70% of nuclear plants. So it's a big problem for the future. And without the nuclear, Germany and Great Britain are better than us. And we have no oil also, we have no fossil gas, no coal, but we have a lot of centrali centralization. <laughs> it's a French, it's a French party. And our government has good ideas, mainly for Europe, but sometimes ignore sometimes major social problem. And uh, it was the, the increase of the carbon tax, the increase of carbon tax led to the yellow vest. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know the, the yellow vest, the gilet jaune. And for us, it was a big problem because we must stop the increasing of this tax. <coughs> Fortunately, we have a lot of professional associations and they are helping to progress. Yves and me are, are member of uh, association in the south of France. He, the name is Envirobat. <coughs> but France is not alone. We are in, in the Europe. Uh, California is in the US and then France is in Europe. And uh, France is only one of the players. <laughs> and Europe helps up us. They vote the end of glyphosate roundup. They vote end of electric fishing. fishing. It, it, it was a, a Dutch treat uh, for fishing. It was crazy. 
uh, uh, Europe uh, vote uh, the carbon tax, but now it's between 20 and 40 euros per, uh, per ton, according, uh, according to the country. Uh, we have av aviation tax, we fight against lobbies, we reduce the coal and we vote the end of fracking. And we have a strong increase in building regulation. And in 2020, the NZEB, nearly zero energy building, uh, is coming. And we have a target of 95 grams of CO2 per kilometer for auto producer uh, next year in 2021. I, I give you an example. If you have 50% of your production in 105 grams of CO2, the other 50% must be 75. And the average level in France is now 110. So we have progress to make. <coughs> Europe is also investment for uh, energy. The forecast is 1 trillion euros over 10 years, according to the new president of Europe elected this, this summer. But Green Party thinks that we, it will require 10 trillion as much as for the subprime crisis, who costs in Europe 8 trillion euro. And the last good, it comes uh, when we arrive in, in, in Davis, the last good news is the European Bank is going to stop to lend money for coal mine or for research and, and for oil. And so it's a good news. For us. So we have to, to fight the reality and for us, uh, France, in, in 2003, the higher temperature were, were inside France, not al among, among the, along the coast, but inside, it, in the, inside this the country. Is that is that? I'm sorry. Ah, sac yeah, it's the Sacramento Valley, yes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but Europe is also biking. You have a big map, and you can go by bike from the north of Finland to the south of, of, um, of uh, Spain. But it's almost done. But maybe in two or three years, it will be complete. Yeah, I, I'm sure Dick and Carol are going to use this path <laughs> yeah. with us. I sure. So, in March 2020, we have election for council. All the council will be renewed, and so it's time for new ideas, and it's why I, I am here tonight. But uh, we are going to show you a lot, a lot of different propositions, but Remember that ecology and social justice must work together. But our government sometimes is is uh, is forgotten this uh, axiom. Maybe I can tell. So I, I begin with biodiversity, safety, and earth. Paris tried to recreate a urban forest all around the Tour Eiffel. <coughs> It's a big project with uh, the actual mayor, um, uh, Anne Hidalgo. I, I think it's a good project and we, we must support her. And Lyon work about fresh city and water management. They try to measure the temperature before and after with a cha changing the, the, the the characteristic of the, the soil. And Marseille ban heavy fuel oil with high sulfur contents for ships arriving at port. Now it's already done for all the ports of the North France and today 
in the information I, uh, I, I read that uh, f uh, is Iceland is going to, to do the same thing. Iceland is the north of Europe. But Iceland is not a member of uh, European community, but maybe one day. <coughs> this city the, is the city of Set. I, I, I don't know if you know George Brassens, but he was, he was a, a people of Set in the south of France. So before, this land was going to be destroyed by the sea. So they decided to... to to protect the coast uh, with plant, uh, planting herbs and building a bike, a bike lane here, you can see. I took, I took this picture this, this summer because I took this, this lane. It's a very nice, very nice. <coughs> and some cities are banning chemicals within 150 meters of houses. The first was city was Languet in Brittany, but now there are more than 100 cities. It's a big problem because uh, 150, because France is a, a, a very uh, little country, so 150 meters, uh, it's a long distance between the fields and the city and the town. So uh, they are, uh, they are discussing a lot between uh, uh, the farmers and, uh, and the mayors. In the commune, the city of Monsatu, it's near Nice, 100% of the school cafeterias are organic or local and, and local food. But since these past months, in November 2019, 20% uh, of the food will, will require in, or, or will be uh, organic in all the French schools. 20% it's maybe one day per week. Or maybe 20% uh, of the food, but I, I, it's more difficult. <laughs> maybe it, at the end of the, the meal, the apple could be organic. <laughs> but, uh, In the city, local vegetable production with restaurants compost are, uh, are going, uh, going to be used. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's going to be used in Briançon. Briançon, it's a city close to Ambron. It's very, uh, it's a, a city very high. So, uh, in, in winter, you have a lot of snow. So uh, they, they must use uh, greenhouses. And the city of Briançon has a network of, of about 120 kilometers of watering channels feeding agri agriculture. And uh, this picture was, was taken uh, maybe five kilometers uh, uh, higher than Briançon. It's, uh, it's, I think it's not, um, not good to, to work by this place. <laughs> you prefer to, to work here. Huh. And that the channel is here. <coughs> at least some cities are reducing public lighting at night to stop pollution and for saving energy, but I know that Davis has dark sky lighting already. Second part is the transportation. We have now a city environmental lab label who forbid access to vehicles above two or three labels. For example, Lyon, Grenoble, Marseille, Montpellier. Level one is electric or hybrid. Level two is uh, the cars after uh, 2011. Level three is after 20, uh, 2006 and so on. But uh, you can say uh, I have an old car, like the car of Dick, 23 years, I think. <laughs> uh, what are you doing with my old car? So the, the city of Montpellier built 4,000 places parking, parking places, and with a very low price. The price is 
only five dollars a day, including transportation in the city for all the passengers. So if you have a, an, an old car, you park all around the city and after you take public transportations. Some cities offering free public transport. It's, uh, it's GAP. GAP is a city near Ambre also. We are a very, very nice country. And uh, Dunkerque is in the north of France. And they said uh, that uh, it's more, it's a, it's a most impo important cost to ask for money than to, than to give a free transportation. But I, I'm not sure it's true. But uh, with free transportation, uh, they, the, the, um, uh, there were more people using uh, 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 public transportation. <coughs> Sometimes we have a, long, uh, 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 a strong development of bike paths, for example, in Strasbourg, Grenoble, Nantes, Paris, but I don't, I, d I have nothing to do to to, to say because Davis, I think, is already the first in the world about bicycle, and uh, I see this uh, information in internet. Still platinum. You see Davis again, uh, her tops bicycle, and I, I send uh, to uh, to. To you, I sent to you this morning uh, information about Davies. I think you are very at the top. <laughs> <coughs> and we have in France uh, electrically assisted bicycle. If you don't push on the pedals, it, you don't you don't go on. So you need a, a battery and the motor here. And, and now um, certain cities vote subsidized to buy uh, this bicycle uh, up to 50% around Paris. It's, it's, a good, um, it's a good deal, I think. So we, we are going to see the energy and building. We have now a, a network of zero energy territories. You have the, see, you have the map here. Um, the network is um, sometimes a city, for example, here, but sometimes it's a department, and sometimes it's a region. And um, they try to arrive to be zero energy uh, at about 2030 instead of 2040, because 2040 is the target of European community. Other cities are requiring BDM or QDM label. It's a, it was a label, label than Eve's, uh, Eve uh, spoke this morning, and if you want if you need information, he can answer to you uh, later. And in this village, a solar energy production cooperative is going to be plugged. You, are, you can see the plug here. <laughs> so it's a, it's a great moment for the, for, the, for the picture. And you can see that PV solar, now the price is $20 for megawatt, and nuclear plant is $120 per megawatt. So it's six times more. And this price is the price of the, the nuclear plant sold, it by, sold by France to England. It's the first time France is making a good, a good business. <laughs> I mean, maybe it will be the ones, <laughs> because I'm not sure it will be work. Because you have a lot of problems in France with nuclear plants, 
and during the life and, and at the end of the life. For example, if you broke this PV solar, you, you, don't, you don't have to wait for 1,000 years to have the temperature decreasing. But for nuclear plant, you, you, you must wait a long time. <coughs> and now cities can buy energy from a green cooperative. We have, we have a cooperative whose name is Enercorp. And Enercorp is buying only hydraulic, wind, or solar energy. So you, it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but you are sure it's not nuclear or coal or, or gas or oil. In, in my city, my village, Ambrun, he used local wood to heat with the district heating system, 300 dwellings and 24 public buildings. We have a big, uh, a big uh, storage of wood and the wood uh, is broken like that and after this, this, the wood is coming to the, the, the big boiler and this big boiler has a big filter and it, it works very well. And uh, the, this energy is a local energy. You don't have to pay petrol to Arabia or Syria or you, you pay wood to uh, the farmer five kilometers close. So I. Le prix en dollar. Ah, I think I have to calculate. And now, now I, I am retired, so it's more difficult. <laughs> uh, I think it's more than is is more than PV. It's more than PV, yes. Uh, 4 centimes le kilowatt heure. Ah non, mais là, c'est pas 4 centimes, c'est 2. Okay, uh, ça me dit, uh, it's made. Le kilowatt heure, c'est 2 centimes. Non? Maybe later. <laughs> yeah. When Yves was, uh, will be speaking, I can calculate. Hmm. <laughs> so finally, we, we know that the effective democracy leads to solidarity and sustainability. And we have a lot of examples about these themes. First, it's homes for all. Uh, in France, we are obliged to build 20% of the housing with social housing. But uh, in this article, it's written, cities have problems to, to respect this, this law. But uh, sometimes they are, the, this one is 22. But but after the one is only 11. Nice, for example, it's, it's 11 only because you have a lot of peop rich people in Nice. And also work. Housing, homes and work, I think it's the most important in your life. Work for everybody is a group of cities uh, w uh, the, this group of cities are aiming for zero long-term unemployment. It's, it's a new experience. And if you want, uh, you want more information, you, have, you can go to this uh, link. For example, in Brittany, this village of Pipriac is creating jobs for disabled people. It's, a, it's an example. Uh, other city can create Maison des Femmes, House of Women, to protect them from violent companions. You have maybe, maybe 500 house, houses like that. It's a, it's a problem in France because we have a lot of macho. Okay. <laughs> 
share the decision. In this county, uh, it's my county when I was young, Le Gers. It's a very nice country with a wine, good wine and a good liqueur. The name is Armagnac. And in my country, um, you have a participatory budget of about 5% of the budget. So this year, it's, it's 1 million euro last year, and this year it's 1.5 million euro. And um, people is voting for, you have a lot of projects, and people is voting, and this year, 30% of the population was voting. It, it's enormous. And they vote, and after uh, uh, this council can uh, give the money to build, uh, some, I don't know, for, for example, they, they, they buy a horse, they buy a horse to work uh, uh, in the vineyards. Uh, they buy a camping car, uh, to um, make information of the public in a little village and to decentralize the, the administration. A lot of things like that. And uh, the people is very interesting. And now the mayor of Paris and Hildago projected to, to, to do the same thing next year. Save money of citizens. In France, we have a, a French paradox. The water is sometimes private. Water and sanitation is private. <laughs> Crazy friends. So we have to re-municipalize, municipal, I don't know, you can see, the water and sanitation. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in my city, Amrang, they, they did it. And the price decreased from 30% the next year. And, uh, and they, can, they can do works, more works than before with the private uh, firm. And the water is very good. Protect the downtown inhabitants. It's, um, it's a national action. The name is Coeur de Ville. City Heart, and help by the cities and the chambers of commerce. It's, it, the action uh, wants to balance large area stores in downtown. You have subsidized to rent a store in downtown, and, and <coughs> they limit the area of the supermarkets. Because if you, if you, if you sell a product in a supermarket, uh, the impact uh, about uh, uh, the workers is less if, if you want this product in a store inside the city. The city. So if all the supermarket will be inside the city, uh, you can create a lot, lot of jobs. <coughs> Maybe we, you can pay something more but you have a lot of jobs uh, created by, by this action. It's difficult to understand for people who have no money, but uh, I think it's a, it's a good orientation in France now, because we have too much uh, supermarket. And um, I don't know if you know this movie, Sorry, we missed you from Ken Lodge. Do you know Ken Lodge? Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a English producer, and uh, it's about uh, this guy working for a, a firm like Uber, and he's um, he's carrying uh, parcels with a, a, a big uh, truck. And he is working from f five o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock to the, 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 the afternoon. And 
and it, it, it was impossible for him to see his family and his wife is going to to go away it's it's very very difficult to understand because with the uber systems uh, the benefit is only for Uber and not for this guy. And in France, we have a, a big uh, um, analysis about this situation. In England also, I think uh, Uber is, is forbidden now in London. Hmm. Maybe the next one, I don't know connecting people to the culture. In my county, um, the, mo the cinemas were very old and was closing each, each other. So uh, uh, the, the county decided to give uh, subsidies to a, an association, the name is Cine 30, 32, and with this money they buy 15 old cinemas, and now you have volunteers for the service. And the price is very low. You have between three and eight euro per movie. And I think you have, you have not uh, conflicts. Uh, no, it's not conflicts uh, at the cinema. It's, uh, you eat, qu'est-ce qu'il mange au cinéma? Popcorn, you have not, pom you have not popcorn. <laughs> but it's better, but, but when you have a guy eating popcorn during the cinema, you can, in, you can understand. Yeah, yes. And it smelled not really good. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yes, I have to conclude, yes. <coughs> Some of these exist in Davis. So you pass, you, I think Davis is a very nice country. And we French, we have a lot of things to learn here. So we can do an exchange. We, make, we made an exchange with Dick. Maybe we can make an exchange between cities, city of Davis and maybe another in, in France. But it will be difficult to, to, to find a, a city like Davis because you are formidable. <laughs> <laughs> And I can not conclude that Europe and California agree on climate. Together, let's work to keep the Paris Agreement. It was the COP21, and actually we have the COP25 in Madrid. It was in Chile, but because the, because the strikes, it's in Madrid, but it, it is the COP of Chile. And we can do this, we can work together to make progress. I, I just note that in the COP21 here, you can see a very light presence of women. I don't know where she is. Maybe one, one here. And I'm sure the presence of women is a pro, in a project is a guarantee of result, or results, I think, I think. I don't know if you agree. <clears throat> Here you have a lot of, of women. <clears throat> so we have the same roots. Should we have the same roots? And to reduce energy and consumption of resources. And to avoid this picture, European Parliament declares global climate emergency one week ago. It was 28th of November. It's finished. <laughs> 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 no. it, it's not really finished, but you can download uh, this document made by Adam. Adam was the, the organize, organization who financed the trip I'm, I'm, I made uh, in 1984. It's, it's kind of California Energy Commission, but it's French. But it is in French. And here you have uh, another uh, document in England, in, England, in English, sorry. 
and made by uh, the European Commission. I can give you, Mr. Mayo, I can give you the, the PowerPoint and you can, maybe you can deliver to your population <laughs> if you want. <laughs> so Eve, Eve and me, we, uh, Eve and I, we can respond to the question, but now I am tired and he's going to work. I'm trying to give you an answer of the price. Uh, so, so when we sell uh, heating in collective networks like that, there are two parts of the price. One is a fee, so an annual fee. It depends on the uh, power you ask to the network. So if you earn a lot of power, so it, it costs you more than it's a few. And after, there is a part which is uh, proportional to the consumption. So it's about, I think, uh, $45 per megawatt or something like that with uh, wood energy. Uh, but you have to m uh, approximately multiply by two with the fee. So the fee is about 50% of, uh, of the cost of uh, the total cost of the energy when you are connected to a network. But you don't have to buy a boiler. So it's, it's an economy, you know. Sometimes you have to have an heat exchanger or a bottle that mix the the flow of heat coming from the network and the flow you you of your dis own distribution. Is it correct? The answer is correct? Yeah. Good guy. Yeah. <laughs> Another question? <coughs> so 15 minutes more of the presentation. So if you wanted to Oh, okay. Ben oui, mais il faut l'installer. Yeah. Euh, tu n'as pas la clé avec dessus ben, On l'avait copié une fois. Well, they mentioned the city of Briançon several times, which is a, if you drive east from Ambrun, up the mountain, you're, you're almost to Italy when you come to Briançon, which is the, it's the, it's the highest city in Europe. And it's a, it's a wonderful city. But above the city proper, there sits this old fortress that was used in World Wars I and II, we understand, well, mostly II, I think, but it's abandoned. And so, um, we were there uh, in, in 1985 for these two months and our anniversary came along and I invited Carol for an evening out in Briançon with dinner. But when we got up there, it was this beautiful sunny day and we saw this, we saw this fortress up above the city and decided that we would hike around the fortress to build our appetites and then after the walk, we would go to dinner. So it was a very interesting old place. And we, it took us, I don't know, an, an hour or so to get halfway around it. And then the other half became virtually impassable. And there was one of us who had the wisdom to suggest we should go back, and one of us who did not. <laughs> and guess which one was more forceful. So by the time we got uh, around through that, on that tortuous path so that we could get downtown to to Briançon for a dinner, everything was closed. <laughs> it was getting dark. And luckily there was a street vendor selling pizza. <laughs> so we had pizza on the street for our anniversary. <laughs> and uh, I, I 
still remember very clearly that event from 34 years ago. <laughs> and I, doubt, I don't think Carol has exactly let me forget it. It's not the, not the only incident of its sort in our background. Should I hand this back over to you now, Eve? Are you ready? Not quite. <laughs> okay, I'll tell one other story. <laughs> so we had this engineer exchange going on, and uh, as I mentioned, you know, we had these French engineers coming to work at Davis Energy Group for two-month periods while their families played. And when we went to Ambrun, it was the same in reverse, and my family was playing, and I was working, trying to work in French in the Adre office in Ambrun. And uh, the weather was very nice. And Briançon, I mean Briançon, Ambrun sits up on this bluff. Uh, it's about a 300-foot high cliff and looks across the Durance River Valley to these beautiful mountains beyond. And then off to your right a little ways, there's this um, man-made reservoir called Serponçon, which, and I think Serponçon might have been the original windsurfing capital of the world. And so we would work in the office, you know, and get there a decent time in the morning and work until noon. And then there would be a two-hour lunch break, because uh, that's what they do in France. And we get back to the office about 2 o'clock. And then about 3.30 or 4, I'd hear either Danielle or Eve starting to mutter, le vent, le vent, and that means the wind. And so it meant that the wind was sweeping up the Durance River Valley, and it was time to go windsurfing. So the office would clear out. <laughs> the engineers would don their windsurfing costumes and go out and windsurf and come back, you know, two hours later and work until 8 p.m. So I don't want to suggest that, you know, these were just uh, folks, engineers who were playing all the time. They worked as hard as the engineers at Davis Energy Group, but they managed their time much more effectively, I will put it that way. How are we doing over here? <laughs> Leslie. Zero, Leslie, actually. I mean, we've done some long tours, um, but they've been ones that we sort of plan. There are some countries that have wonderful, um, well-marked bicycle networks. I mean, I think the one that made the biggest impression on us was the Czech Republic, because they have all these bicycle routes and road signs, and, it's, uh, and some of it's on-road, some of it's off-road. Um, but I was thrilled to see this um, Euro network showing up. That would be really fun. I, I haven't really interrogated them as to whether much of that is off-road or whether it's a combination of on-road and off-road. We're not doing so badly with that in this country. I don't know how many of you uh, participate in the Rails to Trails um, charity or nonprofit, but they're working really hard to create, um, to, you know, to convert unused railroad trails to bike, sometimes paved, sometimes you know, just uh, DG, not not asphalt or concrete paved trails. But some of those are wonderful, and that, they have, I think, 50% of a cross country bike path, off-road bicycling route finished now. So they're driving hard to get the, get the last 50% of that. So we've ridden some of those, but, but not that many. It's possible we're having technical difficulties here. I actually invited our son, Ben, who's um, lived for a year. And after our family was there in 85, Ben went back as a rotary exchange student in, 1988. Oh. Okay. Sounds good.
Okay, great. I was just going to introduce Ben because he was the translator I invited, but these guys, they didn't need it. They, they got their points across. And maybe, they, maybe it's ready. Okay, back to business. Uh, so, uh, it's just uh, to show you uh, what uh, is an application that we did after the impulsion we had when we came here. So, first we uh, worked on computers, uh, but after we think uh, it was good to develop a special approach of uh, sustainable buildings uh, in, our con in our countryside, you know. Um, I'm going ahead. Um, it's based on a collaborative approach. You know, uh, when uh, usually when you are working uh, uh, to reach a label, uh, you you have evaluation and uh, you are working alone and it's something like to to go to an exam an exam you know it's not uh, uh, something which is uh, uh, easy to do and uh, wh where you uh, you tr work with pleasure. So we try to. Uh, change things and to base the, uh, our approach uh, in, in uh, on the working of interprofessional groups, and uh, uh, we also imagine something which is evaluated at several steps: design, construction, and occupancy. So three steps in the life of a building, and uh, a system that increase the frame uh, by integrate the results of the evaluation. So we increase our model uh, by the time. BDM, BDM is building a sustainable building in Mediterranean climate. Uh, oh, attends, je comprends pas ce machin. Moi. Voilà. So we have an evaluation framework it de that depends on the type of the building. So we are, uh, it's, a f for example, residential or commercial or institutional or industrial buildings. With the framework is not uh, exactly the same. The type of work, uh, new construction, uh, renovation, or renovation with occupancy, w uh, which the approach is quite different if that if it's a renovation uh, without any occupants and just uh, you can transform the building uh, uh, and uh, difference also with the context urban area suburban area or rural area and climate in uh, our country it's a, a little like california you have several kind of climate mediterranean so it's uh, uh, close to the coast. Uh, Mediterranean interland, so just a little bit inside, like uh, uh, here. <laughs> uh, middle mountains or high mountains. We, we have the, the, that four climate in our countryside. Uh, the global as assessment uh, is in the seven topics. Uh, project management materials you use it for the construction and especially with uh, the new regulation in France we involve carbon impact of the construction so that uh, enforces the reflection on materials and need that material has to be evaluated uh, to use a good uh, you know value to integrate uh, their impact water management social and economy uh, territory, so, 
uh, energy management and well-being and health, which is very important, for example, uh, for the school uh, project, you have to think about the air quality inside and uh, not to introduce uh, too much pollution with uh, uh, inside uh, material of the building. So as you, I s told you, three steps, design, building acceptance and occupancy, at least two years to evaluate the project. So that approach need to the help of a BDM coach. So it's a professional uh, uh, which is part of the team project that guide all the people uh, to follow, uh, to reach the criteria and uh, to follow the main frame of our approach. We had, we have uh, four level uh, uh, did, uh, deduction of the assessment frame, which is a maximum of 90 points. You, you can add a maximum of 10 points for the sustainable integration and a maximum of five points for I the innovation. Uh, so the four level co correspond to 20, 40, 60, or 80 points in the totality of the evaluation. You have to uh, consider that the BDM approach is more efficient than regulation. Regulation is a basic uh, uh, buildings and BDM uh, uh, buildings are more uh, efficient than uh, basic buildings. It's to encourage uh, uh, building teams to, to do better than uh, regulation and try to reach near zero energy buildings. Uh, our approach is also based on the pet participatory guarantee system. Uh, that means that uh, team buildings, uh, team building, or <laughs> it's not, uh, it can be confused to, to <laughs> use that term like that. The, all the people involved in uh, the building uh, uh, must be volunteer, must accept to present the project in front of the public and must accept to be evaluated and uh, uh, to told and discuss about the evaluation. So you have to uh, a certain approach of the, your profession to uh, uh, to be agree to be involved in such uh, approach. In concrete terms, so we you, we use lots of working groups in. Uh, uh, the method of uh, conception, and uh, we present the, the project in each level uh, uh, in front of a commission and the public which assist to the commission. So we call that BDM commission, and uh, it makes a lot of discussion about the project and uh, uh, the commission is, con it, it, uh, you can see eight people here, which is uh, the commission that do, uh, that uh, give the evolution point on sustainable, um, I don't remember, and on innovation. Sustainable, uh, doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> the the result we have uh, we in the evolution uh, in the BDM approach is that there are 495 projects now in the South France uh, and more than 100 in occupation uh, step and uh, that uh, is uh, one million and uh, seven hundred thousand square meters, so it's, uh, quite a lot of uh, square meters, and that involve also more than 10,000 participants, include all the team, uh, construction, and uh, uh, all the contractors, and all the people that participate to that all that project. 
any QDM approach is, is something that concerns, that it's quite new, that concerns the land, the area uh, approach. You no, know? uh, we we ref in our reflection we think that we have to develop such approach for the areas and uh, your urbanism because it's more efficient to f to search uh, sustainable goals for the building when you are constructing your, the building on an area that have an approach to give uh, lots of change to do sustainable buildings and also that involve uh, all the topics which concern the area like uh, 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 water uh, management for the raining uh, water, um, uh, soft uh, uh, means of uh, uh, transport, uh, the, what the place of the car, which we not we not invade all the space and and things like that. All that those topics are developed in QDM approach. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Il ne veut pas. Il ne veut pas. The map on the side, uh, uh, French map, uh, explains that from uh, our co part of France, we uh, the, the BDM approach is developed also in other uh, part of France, so this is where we are. Uh, Monaco also uh, develop its own demarche, so it's a state, a lit little little state, but uh, big 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 economy. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Occitanie, so another French uh, countryside. Aquitaine, Aquitaine, so which, and uh, uh, Paris uh, region. So in the, those four, uh, five with uh, us and uh, Monaco, five uh, part of France, uh, such uh, uh, approach are developed, but which are every approach is uh, different of the other because the climate is not the same in in such parts. So we have to uh, to fix the requirement differently than uh, from one to the other. And uh, that uh, uh, make uh, uh, the profession of uh, involved in the construction develop some common resources and develop also so also some uh, increase of professional qualification. You know all that demarche, the discussion we have, the exchange, and uh, uh, the work in progress we we do uh, give a lot for the professional. Just some example, and I, I will finish. Um, one, This one, I, I choose it because it's a small realization near Embrun, which is symbolic for this meeting. Uh, it's a headquarter of a fireman uh, of, of this place. Uh, and uh, th we have to develop th this project very quickly because it's an, a touristic area and we cannot do a long uh, work uh, and site in, uh, in, 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 in that place. So uh, it is, uh, you can see, no, you cannot see, it's, <laughs> it's a golden uh, level uh, so it's a, m a more efficient uh, level of the um, building uh, we can have in BDM approach uh, because it's on a concrete uh, 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 basement and with a, f a way of wood frame uh, construction over it and a very, very good insulation. So the heat... Uh, um, uh, needs are very, very low, and they are provided by uh, um, uh, a, a wooden uh, boiler, so a boiler alimented uh, by wood, 
and also uh, PV energy for the electricity. So it's nearly zero energy building. And uh, this was up the site before the construction in July 2017. And this is the site uh, with the construction in July 2018. So it uh, go quite fast for a concrete basement and a, a building in France, perhaps in United States. I know you are working more faster than in France. <laughs> it's not uh, so so quick. And this example is for the QDM approach. So you can see an area uh, of land uh, where the QDM approach uh, was developed. So a reflection about the roads, the connection to the city and to the transportation means. So this is a railway station. The parking place for the car just uh, on the side of the, the area. And then in the area, there is no car. You, you can go, you know, uh, to the buildings, but you can park. Uh, uh, um, you, you have not a lots of cars in, in the in the, in the area. They just are uh, parked there, um, and there is also some place of a, a visitor park. Also, I don't remember where is it. Uh, and you have a, a reflection about uh, vegetation, the uh, management of uh, rainwater, and things like that. Uh, try not using too much unburied pipe, but you know, uh, uh, movement on the site, like in village home, to to conduct the water uh, uh, over the flow. And in the, that area, uh, building has to be BDM silver. So this is the first BDM silver. Uh, construction in uh, the block A uh, on the area, which is a, a housing uh, building. And uh, you can see it's face south uh, with a lot of vegetation uh, that uh, lose their uh, leaves, yes, <laughs> in winter and uh, uh, make a shadow in the, in the summer and, and things like that. Uh, and uh, uh, also ground cover with vegetation that um, make it not too hot in the summer. And there is also, uh, in that landscape, there is an interesting uh, uh, water management because it is an old agricultural area with a canal like uh, Daniel was shown in Briançon. That's what the, 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 the approach we develop after, you know, uh, the thing we've seen here and the reflection th that we developed after help us very well to think about uh, all that uh, things. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you. So we're going to open it up for uh, questions from the audience. Uh, the only favor that I ask is if you keep your questions succinct and to the point. Uh, not that this crowd would do that, but uh, we've had a couple of uh, futures forums where people uh, ask a, a 10 minute long question and then have sort of answered the question themselves. and. Uh, Anyway, so let's see if, uh, do we have any questions for uh, either of the presenters this evening? Actually, before we go there, I just want to thank the presenters, but also the Davis Futures Forum for hosting this event. So, so uh, I saw a hand go up, but did you, yes? Yeah, I mean, I've got a loud voice. Well, uh, apparently this is being uh, videoed, oh, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just love to hear you guys elaborate a little bit about storage. So that's one of the challenges we're having here in California. And 
the, and your grid management and how, how the grid and storage, how you, how you can if, get storage and grid to work together mean, with these projects. You mean electricity? Electricity, yeah, like the, the, the electricity system and, yeah. Here, well, <laughs> I can do this. Oh, in, in France, we have a, a grid electricity network and so, uh, first PV system was just installed to, to sell all the electricity to the networks. But it was to encourage the development of PV. Now it changed and, uh, you know, it's more for housing, uh, offices or uh, you know, buildings, uh, auto consumption way, which is uh, a privilege, privilege. So uh, you you have to think how you can consume the electricity you product, but you can sell the, the extra uh, to the networks, but not with the same price than before. So. Uh, there are uh, solutions to store the electricity which are developed uh, on the, but you, you have to you know, di uh, design the, the system that with not too much power. Otherwise, it's very difficult to store electricity. It's a, a great expense, and also it doesn't last a long. You know, battery you have to replace them, and uh, uh, well. so now for buildings, uh, it's uh, more auto consumption solutions that are developed in France, and uh, you can also see big installation, but they are just selling everything to the networks and it's not the same way it's a uh, competition that uh, the EDF so the uh, energy pro uh, society that uh, uh, develop competition to, to have the less price to to the electricity uh, PV uh, they, they, they are buying of, or after others, like Enercop, also they develop their own project. So it's company, but small companies that develop uh, renewable resources to provide uh, electricity. So uh, any other questions? So um. I assume the cost per megawatt that you showed or that that were shown were construction costs as opposed to operations costs so once you have a nuclear plant in, you know built um, you know then then you have operations costs so I guess the question is um, in France what's the comparison between the operations costs and uh, for the new the ongoing costs for the nuclear plants um, you know, or are or any of the nuclear plants going to be demobilized if operations cost um, exceed that for PV? It's very difficult to answer that question because uh, we don't know the total cost of a nuclear plant. They provide uh, money to stop them and uh, destroy them, but there is no one nuclear plant in France which, which is completely destroyed and recycling. They, they just are looking how they will do. That's incredible, you know. We have uh, now nuclear plants that are stopped for, uh, you know, um, about 20 years. And they are not destroyed and not, uh, so we don't know the cost, the real cost of a nuclear plant. I very much enjoyed your talk. You mentioned subsidizing rent to keep the shops in the town. We have a, a problem with vacancies in the town. Who 
owns the shops so that they can control the rent or do they use a tax strategy? Our vacant parcel is private. So what is the strategy that is used to subsidize to keep those shops in the town productive and occupied? Uh, it's subsidized to rent the shop to uh, private people uh, during maybe three months, six months, until 12 months, just for the beginning. The, the empty shop is, is owned by a private pe people, yes. It's a market, because uh, if you have a lot of stores, uh, empty, uh, empty s uh, stores, the market is going to be very low, yeah, to decrease. Uh, so, so if I'm understanding the question, so the subsidy, does it come from the local government to assist the private owner in keeping the rents low for that initial period? Or where is the subsidy coming from? The subsidy is going to the, to the, the operator of the, of the shop, yes. R but, uh, from uh, for from example uh, is it from the, the the building owner or is it coming from the municipality it comes from municipal and chamber of commerce and uh, but for example if if you have uh, an owner uh, who want to rent about I'd, two thousand dollars a month for example uh, the commission said it's too expensive. I can give you 50% of the off $1,000 for this, this uh, area. So you are, it, they, they, have a, they have maximum, they have rates. And, uh, but sometimes it works. You have a, in, because uh, you have a lot of uh, stores, uh, empty stores in, in the cities. And after uh, uh, people are, uh, it's, it's impossible for old 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 persons to go to to buy uh, food, and so it's important to help the, uh, help the 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 commerce. Uh, so, uh, any other uh, questions? Is it a good idea for? for <coughs> yeah, that's city possibly uh, an idea. For you have the problem. Yes, I understand. Yes. Mm. So, so I have a, a question, which is somewhat for for whom? Uh, for for either of you. Mm. So I noticed um, in England, for instance, when homes are for sale. So I mean, your your rating system is good upon the construction or refurbishment of a building, but I noticed that in England, whenever a residence is for sale, so any home, it, it has its own individual energy rating based upon an assessment of the actual building, whether it's uh, insulation, the heating method, things like that. So as a person shopping for, to purchase a home, they look, even though the buildings on the exterior, the houses might look the same on the exterior, one might have an energy rating of C, another one might have an energy rating of E, mm -hmm. because one has invested in higher quality insulation, higher quality furnace, things of that nature. We don't have anything like that here. Uh, do you have a similar system in France? Yes. And if there's anybody in the audience who might like to bring that rating system to Davis as a pilot, uh, I am sure that we can find some support uh, to do that, because this, I believe, is something that could be done in months from now as opposed to years from now. Uh, so uh, we also have a, a system like in England so uh, you are obliged before you want to sell uh, a house or, uh, or a, f a flat uh, to do an evaluation. So you have several, uh, you know, expertise uh, experts that have to to come to your home. One about energy evaluation. So uh, there is a method uh, that uh, uh, can give. Uh, uh, give you an evaluation A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, uh, and then you have to, uh, you know, communicate uh, when 
you 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 are publishing and announce to sell your home uh, what level you have in energy evaluation but there are lots of uh, discussion <laughs> about because you can have a, a theoretic approach or a practical approach uh, but the practical approach with uh, energy uh, expenses it depends how you use your home and and the theoretical approach use a conventional um, um, scenario scenario uh, to to say with the conventional scenario you will be uh, have an expense of uh, that level so your evaluation is a b or c but i think now it's it's getting better and last information we we had is uh, you could have a difference of 30 percent of the price of uh, the the same um, for the same area you could have 30 percent difference of the price of the selling uh, selling price for the building because the energy so it's, it was written in, in Negawatt uh, system. Hmm. And you also have other countries that have uh, uh, such uh, approach. Uh, for example, we, in uh, our approach, uh, BDM, there are uh, uh, an evaluation uh, after two years of use. So you have practical results with uh, a real scenario of use. And uh, all, there are also uh, in uh, Switzerland, Swiss, in Switzerland, you know, uh, label that uh, also uh, are based uh, on uh, evaluation in use. And the building in, in that label in, in Switzerland are sell, sell more expensive than the other. And, uh, the, but, uh, Swiss people said, but we want, we agree to, to build a more efficient, but it costs more. And they calculate if it was a good bargain, you know, to have a more sustainable house. And it costs the, the uh, more, you, you sell more than the, we, you expend uh, with a, a good uh, sustainable building, yes. <clears throat> so uh, before we go to follow-up questions from the same people, I'll just make sure that uh, everyone's had a chance to answer, ask a question that wishes to. So we'll go here. Do you know where the wood is actually grown that you're using for your energy systems? The reason I ask is it recently, very recently, I think this week, it's in the newspaper that North American wood is actually being shipped to Europe, and environmentalists are beginning to get upset about that. Do you know where your wood is being grown? So, there are several problems. In small plants that, uh, like the one we, sh you, we showed to you, the wood is grown on the area. It's sure, and it's contracted by the community uh, to help the farmers to, yes. But, for example, European Commission, European system, uh, uh, gold every country to produce with renewable energy uh, a certain amount of the electricity. And uh, there are big companies that said we convert uh, coal plant or uh, to wooden sources to produce e electricity. So that makes a very huge consumption of wood and they have to, you know, buy it in Australia, in uh, Canada and uh, make them come by ship. Uh, Marseille is a big harbor, so the, the, the plant is in garden close to Marseille and they use uh, wood uh, that come uh, from away because uh, they can, it's too much consumption for the 
countryside, you know. So th that's not, uh, uh, yes, uh, it, it's something li like the market law, <laughs> but it's not an environmental law. <laughs> if you, yeah. I would say it's the same problem with all the biofuels. There are some biofuels that are produced locally and others are coming from, you know, Indonesia yes. or other places, you know, and other things. But it's, it all depends on. But solar is just come uh, from uh, the sky, <laughs> and the wind from the air. <laughs> Wood can be in the area or very far, and if you uh, integrate the cost and the carbon impact of the transportation, it sh perhaps it change uh, the impact and the price. So. Um I think you're willing to stick around uh, at the end if people would like to come up and say hello to you, I'm assuming that. So why don't we uh, thank our speakers tonight. And uh, thanks again to the Davis Futures Forum for hosting this event. And uh, I think uh, our speakers will be quite happy to stick around and answer any questions that you may have uh, that you would like to ask them individually. Uh, thank you.